Welcome to Electron Online. So now let's explore the concept of the null hypothesis. And the symbol that we use is H with a little zero behind it, like that. So the null hypothesis is a statement about the population, the product, the design, or the capability or property of a population that indicates failure, misconformity, or deviation from the norm if and that means if the null hypothesis is true. So if we make a null hypothesis and it's true, then there's something wrong with the population or it deviates in an unexpected way from what we expect it to be. And so therefore, we need to be able to formulate that null hypothesis, which would then say that if it's true, it indicates failure of some sort or misconformity or not meeting standards or something like that. So, Testing the hypothesis will determine if the null hypothesis is true or not. Because if the null hypothesis is true, then the population failed to meet some expectation. If the null hypothesis is false, then the population meets the norm or the standard or the expectation. So as an example, let's say that the average shear strength of a bolt being manufactured should be at least... 100 pounds. It should be more than 100 pounds, the average shear strength of a bolt. So let's set up a null hypothesis that if it's true, that property or that condition, that specification will be, be not be met. So the null hypothesis then is the average shear, shear strength is less than or equal to 100 pounds. If it's less than or equal, it cannot be greater than. So if this is true, the specifications are not met by that bolt. So if the null hypothesis is true, then the product fails to meet the specifications. So that's what we mean by the null hypothesis. It seems kind of crazy. Why do you come up with a sentence? But essentially you'll see in the future when we start getting into the details of that, that typically the null hypothesis is set at the very limit of failure. If it must be greater than 100 pounds, and of course if it is 100 pounds, it still meets, it still doesn't meet the specification. So typically the null hypothesis is set at the very limit of the capability where it doesn't meet the specifications or the expectations. And so if we prove that to be false, then everything is good. But if we prove the null hypothesis to be true, then the product doesn't meet expectation and it fails what we expect it to do. So we always look for the very limit of where it doesn't meet specification or expectation or the norm, and that is then our null hypothesis. And then we go ahead and try to test for the hypothesis, see if the null hypothesis is true or not. If it's true, the product fails to meet the expectations. If it's false, it meets the norm or the standards expected, or the values expected to be found. So that's what we do with the null hypothesis. Nothing strange about it, simply you put some limit in where if it meets that limit, it fails what we expect it to do. And that is what we mean by the null hypothesis. Is that clear? <laughs>